Where are the nuclear powered airplanes? Why do I ask? Because if you are green and you're worried about CO2, which you should not be, but apparently a bunch of people are making money in this fake fear of CO2 while they're flying to Davos and they're flying to the COP26, which is held in, uh, uh, I think, is it Geneva this year? I can't remember. Anyway, all fakers, all fakers. Uh, so if you're worried about CO2, you shouldn't be getting your plane. That's all there is to it, uh, unless it's powered by nuclear. And it's not, which is too bad because that's the only way we can have a CO2 free energy structure because you're not getting it from wind, you're not getting it from solar, you're not getting it from hydro, and it's, it's so easy to prove. But yeah, people are fakers. They want to pretend like they're worried about CO2. I don't know why, uh, but then they want to say, I want to fly over the world because my job is important. So let's just, as always, I have a book on the shelf there. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Sustainable Energy Without the Hot Air by my man, uh, David McKay, who since passed on. It's uh, it's just, I mean, it's freaking awesome. 350 odd pages. Uh, if you read this, you'll know more than 99.8% of the people out there. Because uh, most people are dumb when it comes to stuff. They don't know the difference between energy and electricity. They have no clue how things, they just think, there's electricity. I just look at that wall, the wall socket and electricity just magically shows up. That's, again, it's just electricity which has nothing to do with you going from point A to point B in a plane. So let's uh, let's go into the uh, the emissions that I can say you fly from, we're gonna have you flying from New York to, uh, let's say, G what is it, Davos, is that what it's called? We got Davos on here? No, so let's say Geneva, Switzerland. Where is it, COP, the COP, is that Copenhagen? Let's just say Geneva, all right. So you're flying from uh, New York to Geneva, Switzerland. It's almost 8,000 miles round trip. It will produce 2.3 tons of CO2, carbon dioxide, which is equivalent emission for each passenger. Each passenger is on a commercial plane of, uh, uh, of <laughs> so for each passenger, you're going to produce 2.3 tons of CO2. In 2017, 84 countries in the world have lower annual per capita emissions from this flight than just you on that flight, and you're one of, what, 350 people on that one flight. I hope that makes sense. 84 nations, 47% of the world, we're talking, what's that, 3.5 billion people have less emissions in their entire year than you just on that one flight. So if you're flying and you're worried about CO2, you're the biggest fool there is, and many of you are, unfortunately, many of you are. So... Let's read why we can't have nuclear-powered airplanes. So it's ex widely accepted that burning fossil fuels for energy is neither sustainable nor environmentally friendly. I don't believe that for two seconds. Look at the medieval warm period, and then you look at the Little Ice Age. Let's look at those real quick. The medieval warm period right here, uh, the 12 to 1400s. Uh, hundreds, and uh, most people would recognize that as a, as a period of growth, sus sustainability for human beings, a good life. And then we have the little ice age right here, as you can see down here. And by the way, look at Nosa. Uh, uh, we got the hockey stick, Michael Mann's hockey stick, which uh, <laughs> which is zoops and then zoops. That's the red, the hockey stick. Zoops and then zoops. I mean, he just completely obliterates the medieval warm period of the little ice age. Fate. Anyway, so what happens there is most people recognize the medieval warm period was a good time for human beings. Most people recognize that the cold spells from uh, basically 1400 to the 1800s was a bad time for human beings. All right, let's keep going. Skeptical science uh, scientist, he's a big lib, a big uh, fear monger on global warming. But let's uh, let's say uh, the medieval warm period has known causes which explain both the scale of the warmth and the pattern. It has now become clear to scientists that the medieval warm period occurred during a time which had higher than average solar radiation ah, sunspots on the earth from the sun less solar radiation if the medieval warm period led to higher had higher solar radiation led to uh, more warmth medieval warm period and we have lower solar radiation and sunspots what does that lead for the future of humanity cooler times uh occurred during the time uh we had uh see the medieval warm period occurred during the time that higher than average solar radiation and less volcanic activity 
because volcanic activity does what? It puts a bunch of soot in the atmosphere, which does what? It stops the sun's rays from hitting the earth, making it become cooler. Uh, new evidence uh, is also suggesting that changes in ocean, uh, ocean circulation. I'm just trying to see about uh, parts per million. They don't show parts per million. I wonder, it's almost like, why are they not showing that? I think I read someplace, uh, let's see. Medieval warm, now look at the period covered by uh, warmer. All right, let's see. Medieval warm period, parts per million. All right, we had CO2 levels may have been over 2,000 parts per million, parts per million to the beginning of the medieval warm period. Another income truth for warmers, new research says, suggests that CO2 level of the atmosphere is a lot higher during the medieval warm period than today. Uh, 180 years of atmospheric CO2 gas and analysts by chemical methods, published in the prestigious journal Energy and Environment. Ah, anyway, so here we go. Parts from right there. Uh, that's 16, I can't tell, 1600s. Yeah, 16, right when the Little Ice Age was kicking in right there and 480 parts per million. So we don't know. It, you know, We just don't really know, but let's go back to here. So the idea that more CO2 in the atmosphere, again, CO2 is a fertilizer for plants. <laughs> it's just that simple. Uh, oil and coal will eventually run out, maybe, and the greenhouse gases emitted from their combustion threaten the climate in a form of global warming. Yeah. As far as, I mean, again, we can look at this time, and I've done it time and time and time and time and time again. And I got my paper right here. It says, there's one of these things I got to, which right here, it says, what would I do the front page? Oh, hold on, just right here. Let me just show you real quick. The impact, right there, the impact of CO2, uh, uh, CO2, water vapor, and other greenhouse gases on equip, equip, equilibrium earth temperatures and basically what it's saying is no it doesn't just keep going up as this tipping point it goes up it goes up it goes up it's not like that that's a great paper i've done videos on that before all right as far as the transportation sector goes the emission of greenhouse gases from air travel is particularly bad because the greenhouse gases are related at high altitudes directly into the atmosphere for this reason, it is estimated that the gases and particulates emitted from jet aircrafts are two to four times as harmful, harmful as those emitted from your car. So again, if you're worried about CO2, don't fly. Unfortunately, the transition away from fossil fuels has born, been more difficult for aviation than for ground transport. While batteries are far from achieving the energy density of carbon-based fuels, as gasoline contains nearly 100 times more energy per unit volume than the best lithium-ion battery. They are already replacing internal combustion engines to some regard, but not much. Uh, this is possibly true because unlike airplanes, automobiles can afford the additional weight of the batteries. In addition, the power to operate a car is far less than it is to lift an airplane off the ground. While a typical car engine provides about 100 to 300 horsepower, which is about 74 to 225 kilowatts, a single Boeing 777 jet engine delivers 110,000 horsepower, or 820 megawatts, several orders of magnitude greater than the highest performing automobiles. Even when normalized by the mass of transportation vessel, vessel, the jet engine is astonishingly powerful. A car operates 50 to 150 watts per kilogram, while the Boeing runs on approximately 4,700 watts per kilogram. So no battery powered engine has been designed that is capable of meeting this power density. And it won't be, man. give me a break. Uh, therefore, nuclear energy has a power, has the potential to do what neither fossil fuels nor electricity can do, power a commercial scale flight with little to no atmospheric emissions. Nuclear boasts unparalleled unpar energy density. A kilogram of uranium converted via nuclear processes contains 3 million times the energy of a kilogram of coal. A kilogram of uranium contains 3 million times the energy of coal. <laughs> and you can, I'll put the link to the show so you can read how the nuclear planes would work. But again, where are they? You're worried about CO2? You better get going on nuclear. It's just that simple. All right, love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.